What's in the box? There's one good thing about a dulling memory, and that's being surprised by a package you were told about a week ago, or by a movie reference you hadn't encountered in over a decade. So here, my first thought was, if this isn't a leg lamp, I'm going to be so disappointed. That would make more sense if you knew that we watched A Christmas Story the other day. And that's the only holiday connection to this session, really, since Christmas is still a week away. You may be wondering, isn't it weird to be getting new art supplies just before Christmas? And I can see that. But we like to invest in art stuff where we can, and apparently these items were great deals when producer Mike ordered them. Plus, neither one of us wants to dig through the garage of stuff to find our holiday wrapping paper, thus unwrapped Christmas gifts a week early. Arches Cold Pressed Watercolor Paper. It's my cotton paper of choice. Fabiano Artistico is also good, but I wasn't running out of that one, so there was no pressing need to replenish it. I've gone through a couple of Arches 9 by 12 pads now, and you'd think I'd be over the wee feeling when getting a new one, but this one is 10 by 14. These are not for me. That's right, producer Mike snuck in some stuff for himself, but I got the thrill of opening it, and you get the dubious thrill of watching me open it. A lot was cut from this part because I was really into handling these brushes. A size 12 round sablette. A size 10 flat Da Vinci Casaneo. This is a 10 millimeters, which is smaller than a half inch, but larger than a quarter inch, I think.
a size four rigger. I don't have this type of brush, but from what I've gathered, a rigger is either similar to or the same as what's called a liner or a script brush. All three names apply to this sort of long-haired brush intended for thin lines. The longer hairs hold more water than other detail brushes, which is good for long lines. Although it was very hard to hold my tongue and not say, I don't know, Paul Clark uses a number three. It looks like it would make good lines and I'm planning to try it out for myself. Okay, on the one hand, I was shaking my head over this. A watercolor stick? Really? On the other hand, it's a shade I don't have in a form I haven't tried, so it'll be really cool to test it out, especially since it's that popular moon glow color that people seem to go gaga over. And look, it's a set of Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens in sepia. It's got several fine liner sizes, plus a brush tip. Oh yeah, I've previously talked about how much I like the Pit pens, so I'm happy to have this set. There's a YouTube channel called Lost in the Pond. I've been watching a lot of it lately. It's an Englishman commenting on cultural differences between Britain and the U.S. It's gentle and humorous, and the sort of thing to put a smile on my face. Apparently, he's been doing this for five years, and I've only just discovered it. Why am I bringing this up? Because I'd been wondering why Faber-Castell calls these pit pens and it turns out that Pitt also happens to be an English surname from way back. We're talking like the 1500s. Do I think there's some esoteric German slash English connection? Not really. I'm simply indulging in a bit of word association. And that's the long and the short of Pitt. Not from this box, but rather from a previous package. Schminka! It's the trial set number two with six 5ml tubes. 
Set number one has the basics, but I figured I've got plenty of the primaries, whereas in this set, set number two, there is Turner's Yellow, Quinacridone Gold Hue, Potter's Pink, Cobalt Violet Hue, French Ultramarine, and Paraline Green. There's an upcoming pour and swatch video with these paints. In fact, it should be the next one, with a painting session planned after that. When the small package arrived, I was confused, thinking, wait, there are paints in here? Every time, I'm always surprised by how small 5ml tubes are. I paid such and such dollars for this. Actually, considering how pricey this brand is here in the U.S., I feel lucky to have gotten this set for, was it 35 I believe it was $35. In my opinion, that's a budget-friendly way to get some schminkas. For context, their set of 12 half pans is close to $100 on Amazon. To be fair, they are highly praised as one of the top watercolor brands. This is their professional quality line designated by Horadom, whereas their student line is Academy. But sheesh, $100 for 12 half pans? The other night while watching A Christmas Story, I thought I had a brilliant idea for a holiday treat. There I was, congratulating myself on my cleverness, but according to a cursory Google search, I'm not the first to think of Coke and eggnog. It's delicious, by the way. And I'm sure it can be made even more palatable with a shot of nice dark rum. Just FYI. I'm happy to share this haul with you. There's a word used in Britain that means very pleased, and it's chuffed. I encountered it years ago and always wanted to use it in conversation. Unfortunately, I expect it would sound less charming and more smarming in an American accent, so I'll wait until I can pull it off convincingly. Today is not that day. So, yeah, this was a pretty good unboxing. In other words, better than either a leg lamp or a coke and eggnog. Until next time, stay artsy, my friends. <laughs>